Hey everybody, this is your Digital Super Saiyan 3 back with another video. And finally, we're getting into our Pokemon Jirachi Wishmaker review. I know this... I know it has been a long time coming since I had been procrastinating so much because I had other stuff on the mind. But finally, your Digital Super Saiyan 3 is finally giving you the Jirachi Wishmaker review. Okay, so most of this movie basically is dedicated to the legend of this Millennium Comet. And it appears every few thousand years or it appears every 1,000 years or so. And, well, Ash and his friends basically find themselves tied to the legend surrounding this Millennium Comet. And basically, about how it's powerful this thing is. They come across a circus run by a man named Butler, who is also part of the festival that is celebrating the Millennium Comet. And, well, Butler is our antagonist for this movie. And we'll get into his motivations when we get into it. So basically, Ash and his friends meet Butler and become part of his show. Of course, during the, during the magician's show, well, Team Rocket appears and doing their usual shtick, their usual shtick, they try to capture Pikachu as well as Butler's other Pokemon that he had helping him with his show. And yeah, they do fight off Team Rocket, and Team Rocket went blasting off again. Of course, this is the movie that started off the Hoenn region, the Hoenn region films from Gen 3. And being a Gen 3 movie... It has May and Max as the new characters as part of Ash's group along with Brock. And Max is basically the character who takes the spotlight in this film. Basically, during the show, he heard Jirachi talking. And, well, basically because Diane was holding up the crystal that Jirachi was sealed within. Mostly as a cocoon. Anyway... Jirachi awakens the very next night, and basically, he and Max become very best friends. And throughout the movie, we get a really good, touching friendship between Max and Jirachi. It's a really believable friendship. But of course, we get into Butler and his motivations. Butler, who, who's not only a great magician, he practically wants revenge on Team Magma. And Team Magma wronged Butler. Butler promised to make a Groudon for Team Magma. However, when his experiment failed, Team Magma fired him. However, Butler vowed revenge on them. And along with him is his sweetheart, Diane. However, Diane does not like where this is going. And trust me, she really does not like where this is going with Butler. So, while Max is, while Max and Jirachi, while we then get a montage of Max and Jirachi hanging out and enjoying the theme park rides of the festival, like a roller coaster and a few other things, and we get a lot of Pokemon themed, you know, attractions, like a roller co like, we got a roller coaster and everything, and they're all in the shape of Pokemon and everything. But then we also get this Absol who appears in the movie, and Absol was trying to take Jirachi back to Farina, the place where Butler and Diane found him. Anyway, Absol, at Absol attacked Max and the others, and then while trying to while trying to take Jirachi back with him. Of course, he gets captured and put and gets locked in a cage. However, we then get into Butler. While Ash and his friends were sleeping, Butler snuck out and took Jirachi from where Ash and his friends are sleeping and tried to use Jirachi to power his machine, 
where he can use it to make a Groudon. And trust me, Butler's Butler is not technically a bad person. He's not a bad person. Sure, he wants revenge on Team Magma, but we get more about him, you know, through Diane and, you know, and what he wants. Basically, or shall basically Diane talked about how long she's known Butler. After Ash and friends saved Jirachi from Butler, Butler is on the Butler is on the trail of Ash and his friends who take Jirachi. And after they take Jirachi and they're heading for Farina, Butler basically is on their tail to use Jirachi to make his quote unquote Groudon for revenge on Team Magma for wronging him. Of course, of course, Diana wishes just for all this to stop, you know, that as soon as this comet, you know, the whole thing with the comet is over, she practically just hopes Butler goes back to being the same Butler she knows. However, when Ash and his friends do reach Farina, Max is reluctant to say goodbye because he doesn't want Jira because he doesn't want to leave because he doesn't want Jirachi to leave. However, Ash talks about however he do, Ash does give this speech to Max saying that that sometimes friends go away and and but they'll always be a part of you. They'll always be a part of your memories and in your heart. Ash's speech to Max is definitely a high point of this movie and definitely Ash at his best. Sure, people complain a lot about Ash nowadays, but this is Ash. This was Ash still in his best here. Anyway, they arrive at the cave where Jirachi was sleeping, and of course, they are then ambushed by Butler, who then captures Jirachi and then forces Jirachi to be hooked up to his machine and uses it to create his Groudon. However, it's not what Butler, quote-unquote, wanted. Instead, it turns into a monstrous, blobbish thing that practically is killing plants and absorbing organic life within it, just to make itself stronger. And, of course, the only way to stop it is to hook Jirachi back up to Butler's machine and reverse the polarity. So Ash and his friends had to work together with Butler to put their to put their differences aside with Butler. And of course, more after the fact more or less because of the fact that Butler watches the monster absorb Diane after Diane risks her butt to save Butler. And you know, you actually see that Butler does care about Diane, despite he is a very comp. Despite he basically wants revenge on Team Magma, but of course he gives all of that up after Diane sacrifices herself to save Butler, and of course, and of course he wants to help Butler. Then decides he wants to help Ash and his friends. Of course, May and Brock get captured and. Of course, Max is willing. Max is Max and Ash, Max, Pikachu, and Jirachi, along with Butler, basically, basically fly on top of the back of Salamence and Flygon, are flying through, are flying through Farino, and thanks to hooking Jirachi back up to the machine, Jirachi then reverse. The polarity, the machine reversed the polarity. Basically, the tentacle raping Groudon went back into the, went back, or shall I say, was destroyed. And then, of course, everyone is come, everyone comes out alive. And of course, Jirachi then goes back to sleep after he gets his final wish from Max. Basically, for him to listen to this lullaby, and this lullaby is played by is 
gets sung three times throughout the movie by May. And May singing in this movie is really good. There's also a vocalized track about this particular lullaby. The lullaby is really beautiful with its melody. I cannot say that it's a bad song. It's in fact a great song. In all honesty, I think Jirachi Wishmaker was much better than Heroes. No offense to Heroes. I, I liked Pokemon Heroes, don't get me wrong. But I gotta say, Jirachi Wishmaker in my eyes was just the better movie. And I definitely like the friendship between Max and Jirachi. It's definitely very touching. Anyway, this has been your Digital Super Saiyan 3, and I'll see you next time for Armageddon 2000.